Everyone, this is Mr. Chang, and in this video, we're going to take a look at conditionals. So we'll look at the if in Lua, and we'll also take a look at relational operators. Every day we make decisions based on certain conditions. So for example, if it was raining, we would take an umbrella to school. And one way to represent these decisions is using a flow chart. So for example, if it was true, we would go in this direction, or if it's false, we would go in that direction. Now in a flowchart diagram, a condition is represented by a diamond and a process is represented by a rectangle. Now these arrows here indicate pathways for both true and false. Now what we're going to look at here is when a pathway is true, we're going to execute some statements. In Lua, a conditional statement has the following structure. So if the condition is true, then the code between the then and the end will be executed. So let's go ahead and test this out. So let's go ahead and create a script under workplace, like so. And the first thing we're going to do is let's try out this code here. So if true, then we're going to print the condition is true. All right, so back in studio, let's go ahead and say if true then print the condition is true and i'll add at the very top here comments and that's example one just so that we see where each one of our code is all right so notice down here we have this output the condition is true All right, let's try another example. So let's try an example here. And let's see what happens if you do if false. Okay, so let's go ahead over here. And I'm going to comment out this code just because I don't want it to execute it because I have my example one up there. I only want my example two to show. So I've now I've got if false, then will print, does this statement get printed? Okay. And just on top here, I'll say example two, just so that you know that this is the example two code. All right, so we do have the example two being output here. However, this part over here is not printed out because again, our if if this condition is true, we'll execute the code in between the then and the end. But since this is false, it does not execute. All right, next up, let's create a Boolean variable. So we'll create a variable named humanoid and assign it to true. Now a Boolean variable just means that this variable here, humanoid, has a value of either true or false. So let's go ahead and again, I'm going to comment out the example two code. I'm going to say example three over here. I'm going to print example three. And now I'm going to add some code local humanoid equal true. If humanoid, then I'm going to print only human. That's from a famous movie. And I'm going to click on play here. And notice that it says only human. All right, next up, let's go ahead and let's change it to false and see what happens here. So going back into studio. I'm going to click on stop for a second. I'm going to comment out this code here. And I'm going to replicate it again. So I'm going to say example four. I'm going to say print example four. And this time around, I'm going to change it ever so slightly. So I'm going to change it to local humanoid equal false if humanoid then prints are you human so again very similar to what we did in the previous example 
except now I'm using a Boolean variable. Let's go ahead and run this here and let's see what happens here. So I do have the output example four. However, I do not have the print, are you human? Because again, that condition there is false. Now, I do want to note here that if there was any code underneath, are you human? The script is still executing. So again, once this evaluates the false, the script does continue and it keeps going over here. All right, relational operators test or define a relationship between two entities. So in the next examples, we're gonna test if the relationship between two operands. Now, relational operators in Lua look very similar to those in math, except some of them are a little bit different. So greater than is the same symbol, greater than or equal to slightly different. So just like English, the way I would read it is greater than or equal to, that's how you know which one comes first. We have less than, again, just like English, less than or equal to. Now, this is a little bit different than in math. We have been using the equal sign, but that's been for assignments. Now we have the equal equal, which is testing for equality in Lua. That is what it's equivalent to in math. And then we also have the not equal, which in Lua is the tilde equal sign together and in math class it would be the equal sign with a slash going through it now again in lua to test for equality we use equal equal this is a very common mistake that people make when they're coding and remember again the equal sign just means assignments in lua so let's combine these relational operators with the if and so let's look at the last example here. So we've got, let's start with 175 Robux and let's go shopping at the avatar shop. And let's go back to our Robux studio. Again, I'm gonna comment out example four and I'm going to go to example five here. And I'm gonna start off with Robux equal 175. All right, now a Starbucks latte, Starblocks latte costs 125 Robux. And so let's go ahead and buy some Starblocks, Starblocks latte. So let's go back to our code here. And we've got local Starblocks latte equal 125. And let's just, for our reference here, print out how many Robux we have. And let's go ahead and check to see if we have enough Robux. So if Robux greater than zero, then we'll print out you bought a Starblocks latte for 125 Robux. And then let's deduct the amount of Robux. So we've got Robux equal Robux minus Starbucks latte. That's the amounts of our Starbucks latte. So we're subtracting how much this is with how many Robux we have. And again, let's print out because we are very curious about how much Robux we have. Let's go ahead and try this out here. So I'm going to click on print. And again, I started off with 175 Robux. I purchased that Starblocks latte for 125 Robux. And so now I have 50 Robux. All right, but I'm still thirsty. So let's go ahead and buy a Bloxy Cola for 50 Robux. And so let's go back to our code again and let's keep buying items. So we've got if Robux greater than zero, again, we always have to keep checking to see if we have enough Robux. You bought a Luxy Cola for 50 Robux. And again, let's keep deducting from our Robux. We've got Robux equal Robux minus Luxy Cola. 
And again, we'll print out the current Robux that we have. And let's go ahead and test this out. Now, I did forget up here to put how much our Bloxy Cola was. Let's go ahead and add that up here. Equal 50. Now, the nice thing about the studio is it gives you hints along the way that I didn't declare Bloxy Cola. That's why there was a red underneath line there. So that was quite useful. Now, let's go ahead and play our game. And so now we've got, again, we started off with 175. We bought a Starblocks latte for 125 Robux. And then we've got 50 Robux left. We bought our Bloxy Cola because we are still thirsty. And now we've got zero Robux. All right, so what's left here? Now, let's try another relational operator. So we've got if Robux equals zero, let's print out, can you donate some Robux, please? All right, so again, we're going to test for equality here. So we've got if Robux equal equals zero, we're going to print out, can you donate some Robux? leads all right so let's go ahead and test this out here and let's kind of trace through what's happening so we've got robux or Ro robux uh, type over there the current row let's try that one more time Look at our output. So we've got current Robux 175. We bought the Starblocks latte for 125, which left us 50. We bought the Bloxy Cola for 50. So that means we have zero. And in our last conditional statement, since we have zero, that was true. So we have the message Can you donate some Robux, please? All right. I hope that helps. And I'll see you in the next video.